Hello. Welcome back to the KR Daily Transmission. My name is Kyra, and for those of you who are new to my channel, um, I am the author of the Sophia Code. And today we are going to begin a, a journey of eight days of abundance with Green Tara, uh, leading up to our um, Lion's Gate uh, Prayer Collective. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you. Happy new moon. Hi, Corey. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. We've got my green Tara Tonka here, and we're going to we're gonna embark on a little journey together. And I have some... Hi! <laughs> so good to see you. Yeah, so if you weren't with us over the prayer collective call, I made an announcement that we're going to do an early Lionsgate ceremony on uh, August 5th, because I'll actually be in retreat on August 8th. And what's really great about that is that you can go back and you can listen to that prayer call over the weekend. And so we'll be moving our August prayer collective date to the to August 5th. And you know, in ancient Egypt, the Lion's Gate was celebrated for three weeks leading up to August 8th. So there's a three week portal in in the lion's gate, <laughs> the mouth of, of Leo, the, the mouth of the lion, where we focus on our self-worth. We focused on um, knowing who we really are, um, becoming who we really are, embodying who we really are, and learning how to accept and receive uh, the abundance um, of love and support and co-creation um, with the universe. Um, to prosper your divine purpose and to help you abide in a resonance that continually assures you that truly everything is going to work out for you as you follow your heart to fulfill your angelic mission in this lifetime. I'm so glad you can make it to today's live too. Welcome back. <laughs> as I shared on Sunday, I had lost my voice um, towards the end of our dolphin immersion, probably because I was having so much fun with our Sophia Circle leaders. And um, <laughs> uh, I was teaching a lot as well. And so it took me a long time for my voice to recover. And so here we are. And I hope you listened to that prayer collective call. It was incredibly powerful with Kuan Yin. It's up here on my YouTube um, channel. And so if you're just popping on live now, we are embarking on a journey starting today uh, with Sophia Code teachings, um, eight days of abundance with Green Tara. So I was thinking, um, I was asking Tara and, and feeling into what was the best, what is the easiest way for us to come into this conversation about abundance as we um, walk our way up to that lion's gate? And she was showing me different aspects in her key code three initiation. And what happens is every time I go into teaching the key code aspects, I go into a full blown channel dissertation <laughs> about that key code three conscious consciousness of divine feminine Christ activation. And we only have so much time on YouTube live. So I said, Tara, show me, show me how I can be more concise with this presentation. And uh, welcome back. Um, and she showed me if we just focused on the eight great virtues of self-love leading up to that August 5th Lionsgate Prayer Collective call, that this would really support us to, to just ref to reflect, to choose which resonance we're going to focus upon to make the shifts in our life based on these eight great virtues. Uh, that we're going to explore. So Green Tara's chapter is, it's massive. It's, it, but the, the, the pages we're going to read from today are page 136 and 137. Green Tara is the Maha, most ancient key code teacher in the Sophia Code lineage. And what she shares about abundance and prosperity is profound but she's also sharing with us not only about the source of our prosperity and our abundance, but also what does it take 
to stay in alignment with our heart, with our innocence, with our intuition. Uh, all of all of these topics are what we're going to be covering in our Sedona immersive at the end of August. You can learn more about that at my website, kaira.com. And this reading we're going to pull from, we're going to start with the eight great fears, because when we're talking about a subject like abundance, there are, are so many fears that can come up around the subject matter of abundance. If you can relate to that, feel free to share in the comments. Um, maybe if you've been working on abundance and prosperity consciousness, if something has been you know, if there's a fear that's been coming up for you, you can say, I can relate to that. You could just type, I can relate to that. Um, I'm, you know, I'm allowing myself to, to be on that healing journey as well with abundance. So the reason why I'm inviting you to, to comment on that is because I think many people feel alone. Hello, welcome. In their journey of healing up the, their relationship with abundance. And the truth is, is that the matrix programming on this planet is designed to keep us in strife, to keep us suffering. It's designed to keep us divided against ourselves. And so when we are approaching a topic like abundance, it can bring up an enormous like tenderness in our hearts. Um, and because our desires are so strong to live in that golden age you know, prosperous consciousness that we all know is possible in our human experience. So thanks for sharing <laughs> in the chat so that others can feel like they're not alone in this journey as well. And, um, and yeah, with Twin Dragons is ready and seems like the abundance topic is huge for so many of us. It's true. It's true. And here's the reason why, and this is why we mentor with Green Tara, who you can meet in the Sophia Code, this is why a, a huge reason why we mentor with Green Tara and Ascendant Master Isis when we are healing up our relationship to abundance. In fact, Green Tara's Key Code 3 initiation in the Sophia Code is called It is Safe to Create Your Heaven on Earth. And therein points to why this is such a big topic for light workers. It is safe to create your heaven on earth. What is that saying? Well, it's saying that humanity has been so beaten down to even touch into heavenly and divine consciousness as a source of its prosperity, its health, its well being, its wealth, that we've been, that, that there's an outstanding trauma in the collective fields about abundance, about receiving more. And not to mention so many past lives where you may have, you know, suffered <clears throat> both for your light or maybe just the circumstances that you had incarnated into in other lifetimes. If we have unresolved trauma around lack and abundance in other lifetimes, we can carry it forward into this lifetime. Healing is a, is a multi-layered journey and it, it happens on an S curve, whereas you begin to heal one aspect of your life, it starts to open and blossom and invite other parts of your life to heal. And this is why we mentor with Green Tara because she aligns us with the Dakini energy. She aligns us with this fierce divine feminine energy that wants to protect you as you explore your deepest wounds about feeling valuable and worthy of receiving greater abundance in your life, greater resources, greater levels of support. I mean, I'm personally in a journey of healing that for myself. There's, there's a lot of ways that I'm calling in greater levels of co-creative support for this movement. And it hasn't all shown up yet. It's been, it's, it's, it's been a lot for me to personally sit with in my journey of abundance. You know, abundance isn't just money. Abundance is the right people, being um, being able to co-create um, and trust and receive um, others that want to co-create with you. Um, abundance is an abundance of resources and um, and freedom. Abundance is love. Abundance is companionship. Abundance can be family and friends. Abundance can be health. Like abundance is anything and everything that brings balance. Um, and brightness 
and joy into our life. And so when we mentor with Green Tara, this is a this is a um, an antique tonka uh, of Green Tara. You can see some of the smoke marks on her face from the temple that she used to live in. And this, this tanka is very, very powerful. You can watch our 21 Days of Green Tara series that I did um, two years ago. Very powerful. Um, it was uh, right when the pandemic really, pandemic really hit. And so it was really Green Tara that initiated our community in, into recognizing and remembering that no matter what the outer world is choosing, we can choose in our own hearts, what our own sovereign reality is going to look like, feel like, and manifest as. So these eight great fears are what Tara helps us overcome in our journey of healing our relationship with abundance with the eight great virtues of self-love. Now, these, these are Tara's direct transmission teachings, um, both from her heart and from uh, the Dakini angels that attend to her transmission, that are a part of her transmission, these wrathful protectors of the Dharma, of the teachings, of your own enlightenment, of your own journey of healing and awakening. So there's this, this incredible tenderness that comes with Green Tara. She's known as the savioress to the Tibetan people. She's she's always got her right foot forward to support you in your prayers and your meditation. She's, she's extremely healing and all the other forms of Tara emanate, radiate out of her. And so the, the color of her skin, that green emerald green color, it's reminding us that abundance is, it's everywhere and it's in everything and it's what you are. And so it's the richness of life is that it is overflowing abundance. It's never not that. And so one of the first interesting pieces about attuning ourselves to abundance consciousness is that abundance consciousness is abundance. There's nothing else to it. There's literally nothing lacking in it at all. And so when we have a belief system or a fear that's that's creating dissonance with the abundance consciousness that we already are, um, because our divinity is abundance consciousness. That's what Green Tara is continually transmitting to us. What happens is where we feel like we're fighting against ourselves, and so these eight great fears on page one thirty six of the Sophia Code. Um, it's one, two, three, four, five. Paragraph five, I'm going to read this paragraph. These are the words of Green Tara. So she's sharing, in the, in the shock of suffering, there are eight great fears that can take root in your mind as harmful addictions to pain. These eight great fears are designed to separate you from your happiness and the truth of your sovereign divinity because it's, it's, your sovereign divinity is the source of all your abundance. And are as follows, ignorance, attachment, hatred, arrogance, jealousy, miserliness, doubt, and projections. So the eight great fears are something that go back in the Dharma, um, you know, for generations. The Tibetan Buddhists have been teaching about these fears and how to overcome them, you know, forever. Um, this is Green Tara's direct transmission on what she believes her original source teachings are for how to overcome and dissolve these eight great fears. So we would jump to page 137 in the Sophia Code. Um, and for the person that's just joining in asking, is this for women only? Uh, you are welcome here. All who come in a good way are welcome here. The Sophia Code is a sacred text on the sovereignty of humanity. It's a divine, it's coming from a divine feminine teaching perspective. However, um, the divine feminine is within all, both genders, <laughs> uh, within all human beings. Uh, masculine and feminine exists within each and every one of us. So you are welcome here and we're glad that you're here. Um, 
Emily is asking um, out of the eight great fears, what exactly does miserliness mean? Miserliness is, well, it's like the movie Scrooge. It's like Scrooge, you know, it's, it's when you're so afraid of losing what you have that you can't see what you have. And then it causes you to refrain from being giving. It causes you to hoard. It causes you to maybe be um, not so thoughtful with others um, because of your fears. And it, it creates a, like, a, like a penny pinching energy that can really pinch you off from the fullness and the abundance of life. Um, so someone's writing in, uh, that they think it means some sort of greed. It, it is a level of greed, but it's greed based in a profound fear. So it, it's when you are so terrified of, of being in lack that you actually become an embodiment of like angry lack. So it, I, I have a lot of compassion for that fear because I know how much it affects people and they don't even know it. It's a very easy fear to fall prey to no matter how much money you make. And usually the more money people make, uh, the more fearful it becomes because the stakes get higher and higher. And there's, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of responsibility with, with great, um, you know, when people have a lot of abundance uh, and prosperity that they've accumulated in physical wealth. And so, you know, this, this is important when we're looking at the topic of abundance. Uh, my prayer for all of us is like, can we let go of the judgments that we have of others that, that we perceive as wealthy or prosperous that maybe, maybe you've judged, maybe, you know, you, you have some sort of idea about what's going on for them. And it's just like, every single person is a person. It doesn't matter what's in their bank account. And no matter what level of success you achieve, there's, there's always the opportunity where, um, where you can fall. And so there's nothing but compassion that is being called forth in this you know, discussion about abundance over the next eight days that we're going on this journey with Green Tara, because the more compassion we can have an understanding for how painful it is to heal our relationship with abundance, the more we are welcoming abundance to rest gently and profoundly within our own life. Um, so moving over to the eight great uh, virtues of self-love that Green Tara offers us as a solution. Yes, Twin Dragons writing it, oh, judging them is limiting ourselves. Absolutely. When you judge anyone, and I mean anyone, because of their wealth, you are condemning your own relationship with abundance. And I, I remember when I first, somebody, you know, when I first really got that teaching, um, I really let that sink in because I had such a prayer to heal my own relationship with abundance. And you know, the, the vibration of judging others doesn't even it's not in the same vibration of abundance or prosperity at all because prosperity and abundance is divine love. And it's how much divine love are we willing to accept and to receive in ourselves, uh, from ourselves. And so if we're busy judging others, we're not creating a space of receptivity and a, re and a space of, and also giving and being generous um, because judging others is not generous. It's actually one of a form of miserliness, actually, when we refuse to love others because we think we know something about them that we don't really know. So anyways, uh, coming over to the page 137, the second paragraph um, uh, uh, for Green Tar's chapter in the Sophia Code, I'm gonna read it out loud. Embodying my Kiko 3 transmission calls forth the self-compassion, courage, and assertion to embrace the demons that arise within the body of your mind. The Dakinis are known as demon slayers. They, they help us identify the terrorizing fears that keep us from embracing our enlightenment, from embracing our abundance, from embracing who we really are. Continuing on, awakening the divine qualities of my key code three, meaning awakening the same divine qualities that we value and honor 
in green tar, when we awaken them within ourselves, this liberates your awareness from the eight great fears by activating their corresponding virtue. So your divinity has many, many virtues. And here's some of them that are going to liberate you from fears around abundance. Direct knowing is the solution to ignorance. Unconditional self-love is the healing up of attachment. We're gonna, that's going to be a fun one to share about. Self-forgiveness heals hatred. Isn't that interesting? Self-knowing is the healing of arrogance. Self-communion is the healing of jealousy. Prosperity is the healing of miserliness. Faith is the healing of doubt. And omniscient awareness is the healing of projections. So these are some of the virtues that we're going to be discussing every day as we lead up to that Lionsgate Prayer Collective gathering that we're doing on Friday, August 5th. So be sure to get on my mailing list to get that information for when we go live for that landscape. And then let's talk about this. Virtue of direct knowing versus ignorance. Okay. How does this impact our relationship with abundance? I welcome Green Tara and all of her emerald rays of healing light and the 21 emanations of Tara and all the Dakinis to come forward and to bless you and to bless your abundance consciousness today and to open our hearts to receive the teachings of direct knowing that we need um, for today's day one of eight days of abundance. Green Tara's message for you today is that direct knowing comes from your higher self. It comes from your direct relationship with the source, the source of all abundance, the source of all life. Whatever you call God, we call it the source. We also call it Sophia. You could call it Holy Mother, Holy Father. You could call it Buddha. You could call it the Christ. You could call you could call a great spirit. And direct knowing is, a, is actually a psychic faculty called claircognizance. And it's a downloading process that already happens naturally within you all of the time. And I share about this in my psychic development curriculum. Direct knowing downloads from your crown chakra to your, hearts, to your heart chakra. And what happens is, is your higher self is sending you messages, like literally downloading you messages, insights, and inspirations. One of the ways is right through your crown chakra and into your heart. So two things happen. Maybe you say a prayer. Maybe you spend a moment in meditation. Maybe you ask for some guidance around a step. Perhaps you want to surrender your ideas about what something should be or, or, or how it should happen. And you decide to ask God first, whatever you call God, the divinity inside of you, the divinity that created all that is. Sophia, God, show me what it is that I need to know in this moment. And you might feel a nudging from your heart or some part of your body that communicates to you through a movement or communicates to you through an, in, an immediate inspiration to go do something, to go read something, to go look at something, to take in a piece of information, or you might just literally receive a direct knowing in words of what needs to happen in that, in that particular moment regarding that particular need or request. And The reason why, if you go back and you read aspects one through three in the key code three initiation, which is entitled it's safe to create your heaven on earth. I would like to revisit that for a moment with you. 
it starts on page 152 of the Sophia Code. And in aspect one, we are affirming the following words that are written in the first person. I am the waves of self-realization that swiftly arise from my innocent nature. I am the heroic guide to the salvation of my innocence. My eyes flash the lightning of wise counsel. I rejoice in the glory of Sophia's light as the covenant of heaven on earth within me, for the liberation of all beings. What's so interesting about this is Green Tara is teaching us that your innocence, which she talks about in two sections of her chapter, always knows the next immediate step for how to invite greater abundance into your life, how to come into more alignment with abundance in your life. What is the next step of forgiveness? What is the next step of allowing? What is the next step of co-creation? What is the next step? As simple as like just the next step in your day that's going to attune you to a brighter frequency and resonance, a more full and rich resonance of what's possible for you. And it's when we know and trust that we're being incrementally guided, pivoted towards our highest potential, towards that abundance, that experience of abundance, both within us and in this world. It's when we feel the blessing of that direct knowing that we start to trust abundance consciousness more because we realize that we're always receiving information. It's amazing to me how much we're always receiving information. And it's not just like, you know, God picking up the phone and calling you and talking to you and giving you all the answers. It's like, your body is picking up information. You're, 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 the other day I made a prayer. It was a really strong prayer. And I said, why does this feel so hard in this moment? What is it that I need to, to discover about my own healing around this? I said the prayer, I let it go. I, I, lit, I almost like forgot I said the prayer because I was so absorbed in, in what I was doing. And I turn around and my higher self, this, this part of my innocence inside my heart guided me to go right in front of this piece of writing that I wrote, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago for my next book. It's on my bulletin board. And I went and I read those words and it's for one of my books and it's a much more, it's a very controversial book. And I read the words and I was like, that's why it feels so hard because I'm afraid of how powerful this feels. I'm, I'm actually intimidated by how clear and concise this direct knowing of my own experiences. I don't know if the world is ready for this. And, and I'm, not going, I'm not gonna go any further into any of that storytelling, but I'm giving this as an example of like, I said the prayer and my body literally just pivoted to the answer. And that opened up an abundance of peace of like, I knew what I was wrestling with then. I got it. I, I had the message. It allowed me to step into greater folk, an abundance of focus, an abundance of peace, an abundance of creativity, an abundance of deeper connection with my own heart and my guides. Like, oh yeah, of course. This morning during my morning practice, I was listening to the innocence of my higher self and my inner child. And, you know, we have to build trust with the innocence of our inner child that, that we're going to listen to that part of our consciousness that is leading us to aspects of heavenly abundance if we are brave enough and courageous enough to stop constantly silencing our inner child and saying, yeah, 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 when I'm done doing the adult thing, when it's your inner child that knows a direct shortcut, a direct knowing about what your next breakthrough could be. And so this morning I was in my practice having this huge, like heart opening experience with my journaling and my inner child was like, you told me we would move, we would dance to at least one song as a part of your morning practice. And can we do that? And I said, yes. And she told me, I want you to play this song. I put on this song, it's a brand new song. 
It was the most perfect song I could have ever put on in that moment. It was exactly what I needed to hear. I started to move my body in a way that my body so, so needed. And it just opened up my heart. I started crying these beautiful tears of relief. My inner child was so happy. This was just like a five minute addition to my morning practice. And it changed my whole reality. It brought me information about what Tara is constantly impressing upon us is that, that this energy of our heart, like this energy of our innocence, this, it's, a, it's, a, it's an intelligence, it's a creative genius intelligence. Do you know what happened in that moment? Just to make sure I got the message, a hummingbird came right up to my window. I haven't seen a hummingbird in months, came right up to my window and hovered in front of the window just to make sure I realized that I was listening to the abundance of direct knowing that my innocence was providing for me this morning as a part of my practice to be a part of this moment with you so that we could focus on, you know, when we talk about abundance, we, we often approach the subject as though, how do I solve all the zeros in my bank account? Or how do I, you know, get greater funding for my divine purpose? It's like, it's so interesting how it really is a step-by-step, -step, just a daily moment-by-moment -moment practice that, if we are truly focused on this virtue of self-love and being grateful and appreciative for the direct knowing that we are giving, being given all of the time, all of this divine guidance is flowing to us all of the time. As we appreciate that more, we start to relax more and bigger ideas about how to create greater allowance and greater avenues and streams of abundance to come into your life, it will land deeper within you because you've been creating a safe space within you to recognize how abundant you already are in this virtue of self-love. These are virtues of self-love to appreciate the direct knowing is happening in your body, in your heart, through aspects of your divinity, such as innocence, that are always guiding you. Tara, the Buddhas, and the raffle protectors, the Dakinis, this is what they're protecting you from. Their, their, their presence as mentors and guides are, they're continually helping you lean into that vulnerable edge where, you know, maybe you get an instinct from your inner child, like an, uh, an intuition. And it might bring you up against your edges of how you might've been abused or programmed that, oh, we don't, we don't do this childish thing right now. There's business to do. There's money to make. There's abundance to be had. When the irony of it is like, if you just open your heart for five minutes to this innocence, to your inner child, it will soften you to um, be more open in your adult mind, which can become very hard and rigid with the eight great fears. Our innocence keeps us safe from ourselves. And when we don't know that that's what's happening, that's when Green Tara comes in to start mentoring you really strong along with the Dakinis. They're like, they can see it. They can see when you're being too rigid and hard with yourself that new ideas can't land or bloom within you. They help keeping you, they help you to keep returning to that direct knowing of your innocence. And that's a very raw and vulnerable growth edge to be present to every day. You know, uh, I'm not dancing around my house all day long with my inner child. That's real. <laughs> like there's a lot of adulting that happens all day long, probably way more than I want. But what what is beautiful is that there's all these parts of our consciousness that want to work together to create greater abundance in your life, like a more softened, flexible, open-minded adult awareness that is abiding in these eight great virtues of self-love is going to be more open to the guiding light, the direct knowing of your inner child's innocence. And what's extraordinary about this is that, and I got to see this in the dolphin retreat where we are experiencing so much joy with the dolphins and how much the innocence of my own inner child wanted to invoke and play with and witness the innocence and inner children of everyone on the trip. And the more honest we became with our feelings, the more vulnerable we became with co-creating with one another and connecting with one another and opening up and 
just really accepting and receiving the abundance of one another, what happened was there was this force field of joy. There was a buoyancy of love that allowed for even greater levels of creativity and healing and inspiration to arise that there was no way to even plan that. It was just it was just bubbling up and happening because we were all choosing to create a safe space of acknowledging our direct knowing. That's why certified Sophia Circle leaders are so amazing. They've, they've been trained in the Sophia Code Mystery School to, to know how to face their greatest fears about truly owning their psychic development and their intuitive self, knowing their direct knowing. And they're willing to lead from that space. So much gratitude and respect to our Sophia Circle leaders. Thank you to every soul that came with us to Bimini to swim with the dolphins. Um, so anyways, I'm going to close today's um, teaching with that beautiful virtue of self-love. Direct knowing. You really do know. You really do know what it is that you need to do to create greater abundance in your life. It may be um, creating time for a longer morning practice. It may be journaling more. It may be getting more into your body and creating that physical space for abundance to come in and to soften your mind with meditation. Um, it may be you know, allowing yourself to have art supplies, be more creative and flexible and playful. Um, how are you honoring direct knowing in your life? Maybe you garden, maybe you put your fingers in the dirt and you can feel the energy of the earth. Um, you can feel the consciousness of plants or maybe it's when you're with animals that you're really attuned to your direct knowing. How are you bringing appreciation and honor to your experience of direct knowing. You know, when I looked at those pages on the wall that were written so powerfully, it literally shocked me. I hadn't read them in three weeks. I have this practice where if I write something that's really, really powerful and I think I usually think it's crap, number one. <laughs> so what I do is I put it up on the bulletin board and I, I call it, I let it breathe. It's letting the page breathe. So I hadn't read that in a couple of weeks, what was there. And I let it breathe. And when I came back to it last night, it was like, oh my God, this is why I'm getting so many messages to complete this book. It's, it's, it's timely. It's needed. It's now. It's, it's going to rock a lot of people's worlds. And it's going to open us up to an abundance of healing and an abundance of blessings and, um, and create you know, a whole new level of, of abundance of creativity in my own life. And so I just share these personal vignettes with you, hoping that, um, you know, that by sharing my vulnerable, raw human journey, that it inspires you to, to be brave and courageous um, and to accept and love your own heart more for all the courage and bravery it takes to be human. There's, there's 1 million things to be afraid about all day long. And, um, and that means there's 10 billion things for us to be um, appreciative and grateful for and to focus upon and loving and uh, generous with ourselves for facing those, those fears down and choosing to create anyways, choosing to love anyways, choosing to receive anyways, choosing to give um, beyond uh, the condition of the fear of this world. So thank you for embracing um, this virtue of self-love today. Um, thank you for your beautiful feedback in the chat. If you're watching this on the replay, feel free to share your comments and your feedback um, in the comment fields of this video. Thank you so much for liking this video, for subscribing to my channel, for supporting this free ministerial offering. Uh, that happens um, every week, whether we post uh, videos from our mystery school or uh, if I am able to be here on live, which um, more often than not, that is always my prayer. And uh, it's been so nice to be back with each and every one of you today. Thank you so much. It's been really cool to witness uh, your conversation with one another, your comments about abundance. Um, and if uh, this conversation around psyche development is inspiring you. Consider joining us either live in person in Sedona 
Arizona at the end of this month, at the end of August, you can also join to our virtual conference access pass. So if you have any questions about that, my team angels are here for you and I'm happy to get on the phone and share more with you about that. Thanks everyone. Thanks for liking this video. Have a wonderful day or evening wherever you are. Ah, so good to be back here live with you. Namaste. I'll see you tomorrow for day two of eight days of abundance with Green Tara in the Sophia Code.